This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to another video on Prime Mover. Last time we were here we were um, we've solved uh, the Xmen puzzle. And I said um, Prime Mover is a game um, where finding a solution is one thing, but where optimizing your solution is really where the the, the fun comes in again. It has a lot of replay value in that aspect. And to show you how um, optimizing might work, we're gonna take a look at the reorder puzzle. Reordering will solve as follows. Um, you get a string of numbers on your um, A input. Um, first a 6, then a 2 and then a 3 in the, in the first example, and then we get the reset instruction. Um, and we get a specified order on the B side. This means that of the three inputs we get from A, we first need to send out three, then we need to send out the first, and then we need to send out the second. So this needs a couple of things. This needs um, storage, for example. Um, so that's what we've got here. Um, I've got five storage cells. Each cell will store two numbers, except for the last one, which will only store one. The uh, specified in the um, in the parameters here, B is never greater than nine, so no series will have more than nine elements. So my first memory cell can st has st embedded cells one and two, cells three and four, etc. And here is the lone cell nine, which is a lot simpler in design. Um, and then we need uh, the order number coming in to release one of these memory cells, the correct one, in, in fact. So there's a lot of delay on this line to give the, um, the first number coming in here, the first um, instruction on what memory cell to empty is, is delayed a lot until it hits uh, this part where it gets delayed a lot more than the uh, instruction to uh, empty a memory cell is sent down and sideways. When it's sent sideways it runs into here to release the next instruction for a memory release and it moves down as well into these. There is a series of four of these switches um, which sends the instruction onto the storage cell. Uh, the storage cell sends a reply so the first one comes here the switch gets toggled and the reply is checked here to see if it's zero and gets destroyed, otherwise it moves up. Um, so a lot of action is happening on this cell. It has two storage cells and it has a an, um, processor to see if the instruction that's put in is meant for us or is meant for a different memory cell. So here the um, instruction comes in, we subtract one and, and the logic behind this, um, uh, when we subtract one, uh, Say for instance that 1 was the instruction we were given, we subtract 1, now we have 0. So the 0 gets sent around the rest of the logic onto this uh, duplicator, it's sent out again and up. When it goes up, it, it hits this switch again, so whenever an instruction comes in, it gets switched to here, and uh, we always send a reply, so it gets switched back. The reply is sent back, and if, uh, in case of the 1 we were showing, it now is a zero, it travels along this path, it gets destroyed and nothing is propagated. Um, and the zero leaves through this exit, which is routed here. Now, here we have a um, number coming in, locking the cell, and every following number is sent along. Uh, so this is unit one, every following number is sent along to unit two, and if that one is full to unit three, and unit four, etc. When a release instruction comes in, it releases the lock, the number that was stored here gets duplicated, one is sent to the output and the other one is sent up to the lock where it toggles it back into a receiving position. Then both the signal used and a copy of the number stored gets destroyed here and uh, one goes out all the way to here and then enters this bus on the way to exit C.
Um, and if we, uh, for example, if we get a 3 or a 5 or a 9, um, then the number is put in here, sent into this unit. Um, one is subtracted, it's not zero, so the release for uh, unit one isn't sent. We subtract another one from it, um, and then we check if it if it was a two when we started. If it was a two, uh, it would be sent down and copied for um, the return value, uh, and the two would be sent into this one. Same thing happens, but let's say we had a five, then the number itself is not sent along this output, it's not sent along this output, but just hits this one and the number is returned. It's now a 3 because we've subtracted 2 from it. The 3 is given back to this unit which switches it down here. It's not a 0 so it gets pushed along. And for controlling units 3 and 4 there's the same switch here and here. 5 and 6 are here and here. 7 and 8 are here and 9 is all by its lonesome. If anything is left, the only thing that can be given down from this unit is a 1. And that 1 is just uh, used to release the lock here and then destroy it. So that's how this puzzle works. It has a lot of delays in it. It's uh, yeah, We need a lot of time on, on this circuit board here to um, store one number and then propagate the rest onto the second unit. Here we will see that one number is stored here and the second is given through. It will exit this cell here and be put into here where it will hit the lock here. So we had three numbers coming in until the reset was reached here. Those three numbers are now in positions three, two, and one. Now, uh, because we need to accommodate nine numbers coming in this way, which can take a long time, uh, the the input on the first on every number uh, instruction here is is very long. So we have a three. A uh, three is not a one, is not a two. So finally, a one is passed on here. One gets subtracted from it, so we need the first unit on the second plate, which is cell number 3. The lock gets released, the switch gets put back, and number gets destroyed. The 3 is output, placed onto a bus, moved to the exit. Then we get a instruction for uh, unit 1. Where are you? Oh, you're still in here. Oh, that much delay. Okay. So this is a 1, which will release the first cell on the first board. One goes in here, one goes in here, one is subtracted. And as you can see the return code is given here, and back to here. And it's used to simply switch this cell back so it can once again receive input. And cell number 1 is emptied, whereas 6 now leaves the building. And finally we eventually get a 2. So, one part of Prime Mover and any zag like is, is solving the puzzle. Another significant part is optimizing it. If we let this run for a while and we can speed it up a couple of times more because this is going to run seriously long. It works! But as you can see, uh, at some points there's really nothing moving along. Everything is just stalled or in transit somewhere and nothing is being done with the actual data. So this puzzle, we get a, uh, we solve it, but we do it in, in 2400 cycles, putting us all the way out here on the Instagram. So this is the point where you think, yes, we solved it, but how can we optimize it? I've been giving this some thought. I thought that the basic design of the machine was pretty good, but a lot of um, time was ill spent. For instance, uh, one of the most major improvements I made on this machine is um, that the signal was given out to a, a memory storage and then returned. 
uh, where it got lowered by one or by two if it was turned by two and then the same procedure again and again. That took a lot of time. Um, so I changed that, it now gets duplicated and if this is uh, a one for example, it gets sent out and one is subtracted. If it was a zero, then we don't need to propagate it. If it's a two, same thing, uh, we subtract one, we subtract the two, um, we have a zero now and it once again gets destroyed and not propagated. If it's five, then to subtract it from it and the three is propagated into here which uh, is also fed into the machine and destroyed here, uh, further, further subtracted here and we still have a remainder of one so it goes to the third board here etc uh, where, where it gets used so that's one improvement the numbers the instructions are now sliding along this pipe way faster than they did then on this board um, Every number came in in series for um, uh, board 1, and if that was already full then it was passed along to board 2. Um, but that could be sped up by a factor of 2, simply by uh, alternating between the plates. So I build in a switch. First number coming in is uh, stored here, the second number is stored here, the third number is not stored here but passed along, the fourth number is and, and this means that the numbers coming in, um, the later numbers coming in, the, 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 the input 3 and, and, and beyond, um, hit half the number of boards that they used to. So that's also a marked improvement. Memory itself is cell itself is unchanged, but since we've changed the uh, inputs to this cell, if we get a number in now, we used to uh, subtract from it, and if it uh, if it had a remainder uh, greater than zero, it was returned. And if it was zero, then a zero itself was returned to uh, to balance the switches again. Um, but we don't need to balance switches anymore because the number is fed into this machine and propagated if necessary. So we can just concern ourselves with: is this for this board? Is it a um, is it meant for the first cell or the second cell? Uh, and if it is, it destroy it. So those are some improvements I've made to um, both the, um, the, yeah, the instruction bus here and, and the storing of items. So let's see if this will run any faster. The previous solution was the 24-24 cycles. Lovely symmetry, though a bit high. Let's see what this does. Also, um, since I've sped up this process, I needed a lot less delaying in here, so this is just straight uh, type and copy, and this one actually hits 592. Our execution time is reduced to 25% of what it was. Quite the improvement, I am very happy with how this puzzle turned out. So that's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed um, Prime Mover once again, I hope um, I've, I've managed to sketch out the idea of the fun that optimizing can bring, and I hope to see you again soon.